I am not telling a fib. We looked at all those different kinds of cells, and now I'm going to tell you that there are two types. And it's true. All cells can be categorized into one of these two types. And I'm going to write them down for you. And then we're going to look at this little image here. So the two types of cells that we are going to look at are prokaryotes. That's an R. And eukaryotes. And I'm showing you this picture because we are eukaryotes. And when I think about a cell, I think about a eukaryotic cell. But most of number wise, most of the critters on our planet are actually prokaryotes. And I'm showing you this little, I don't know if you can see this very well. Let me see if I can get a highlighter. This is the eukaryotic line. Do you see that? And then what I'm showing you here is a evolutionary tree. And you can see that um, this evolutionary tree, we're going to say, oh, you know I love evolutionary trees. So we will spend a lot of time talking about evolutionary trees and like how you read these things. But basically, this says that this is a common ancestor, that little dot that I put on this tree. There was an ancestor at some point, a single celled critter that gave rise to all of us. And when you look at that, you see, I'm going to just show you, we have that little line of eukaryotes that actually like I could go in here and be like, dude, I think the eukaryotes like sort of start arriving like here. So we're new and there aren't very many of us. Check out everybody else. Bacteria and their relatives, these are all prokaryotes. And there's another group called Archaeans and those are all prokaryotes. So just like most of my examples, I get excited about humans and how we function and how our cells function. But really, most of the diversity and lots of action is happening with things that aren't similar to us, things that are prokaryotes. So let's look at what defines a prokaryote. Like, what, it, what does that even mean? Fundamentally, like the defining factor of prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that prokaryotes have no nucleus and eukaryotes have a nucleus and the nucleus contains DNA. It's important to know that even though prokaryotes, bacteria, archaea do not have a nucleus, they do have D DNA. They have instead, um, it's called the nucleoid. And it's the area where the DNA lives. N nucleoid is where the DNA is in a prokaryote. In the eukaryote, we have a nucleus. If in doubt, find out if the cell has a nucleus. If it doesn't, it's a prokaryote. If it does, it's a eukaryote. Done. That's it. You're done. The story is over. There are some other characteristics that I'll just go ahead and add here. Prokaryotes, when you think about bacteria, they actually are much smaller. And so do I have to write that eukaryotes are bigger? Sure. I'm running out of room though. Prokaryotes do not have membrane bound. They know this is a no. No membrane bound organelles, but eukes do have membrane bound organelles. I wonder if that is everything. I do want to tell you right now in that tiny little line of eukaryotes, there are um, four 
main types of eukaryotes that we're going to talk about two in detail today. And I'm just going to write them up here above the eukaryotes. Maybe I'll do this on both of, both of these guys because the prokaryotes, do you remember what I said? What kinds of critters are prokaryotes? We had bacteria and we had archaea. A E A. Archaea. Those were our types of prokaryotes. And you're going to know those. So those are fair game for a question that I could ask you on a test or a quiz. Like, and we'll talk about them a lot in this course. Eukaryotes, the four that we're going to know are guess, plants, animals, fungi, and watch, I'm putting this in quotations, protists. Protists are the only one that are single celled. Sorry, read <laughs> this like mess of what? Rewrite your notes and get these concepts all organized into a nice little structure of what these guys are. Protists are single-celled eukaryotes. So we actually saw a bunch of those in our little walk of fame at the beginning of this lecture. Um, all those big, hairy, single-celled critters with nuclei, those are in the protist category. Protists are not closely related to each other, which is why I put them in parentheses, or I mean quotations. That, these are quotations, not parentheses. I could put them in hmm, focus. They're not closely related to each other. So there's a class, a group of protists that are closely related to animals. There's a group of protists that are closely related to plants. We already saw the um, single-celled yeast, a group, a, a protist, a single-celled organism that's really closely related to fungi. Um, next up, now the way we're going to tackle um, our cell parts, we're going to look at a bacterium and look for cell parts. We're going to look at an animal and look for the cell parts. And then we're going to look at a plant and look for the cell parts. I think actually bacteria is the last thing that we're going to look at. So this is how we're going to go through and talk about what's in these cells. What, what stuff do we find when we are looking in the cells? What organelles do they have? And what are the functions of those organelles?